Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a Christmas table runner and placemat out of two and a half inch wide strips. So let's take a look at the table runner. Okay, isn't that pretty? As you can see, I've got two and a half inch wide strips down the full length of this run runner. They're going at a 45 degree angle. Now, let's take a look at the placemat. Okay, here it is. Again, the stripes are going at a 45 degree angle, and as you look at this, you'll notice I have multiple types or patterns on these strips. This is a great project for using up your old Christmas fabric from past projects. Just cut them into two and a half inch wide strips, or, of course, you can purchase fabric especially for this project. So let me put this away and let's look at the cutting instructions. Okay, now, the finished size is of the placemat is 13 by 18 inches and you're going to cut a rectangle 14 by 16 inches and a second rectangle that's a little larger, 16 by 21. Then for the table runner, the finish size is 12 by 60, or you can make it shorter or even longer if you like. And you're going to cut a rectangle 13 by 61 and a second rectangle 15 by 63. Now, you can use jelly rolls, and they are pre-cut strips of fabric that are usually coordinated colors and during the holiday seasons you will usually see jelly roll packs come out that have that particular theme on them or if you can't find a jelly roll or you want to buy, purchase your own fabric separately uh, cut your strips two and a half inch wide but buy, buy a variety of fabrics so just in the placemat alone I had seven different fabrics so you can determine how many you want to buy and buy small strips buy small pieces of fabric and cut your own strips now if you have never cut quilt fabric before watch the video tips for cutting quilt fabric and I go into great detail on how to cut your fabric efficiently okay alright so now here are some strips that I've already cut out because I have a lot of Christmas fabric okay so in jelly rolls they usually come all laid out like this and they're rolled up real tight okay and you can see all of the different fabrics that are in them and they usually got a pretty piece of ribbon around it wrapping it in a package so when you go to your fabric store and if you're interested in buying a jelly roll just ask them where they have them and there's usually a display somewhere in their store now if you want to cut your own remember watch that video now here's one of the strips that I've already cut out and as you can see it's folded so that's how you cut them out they're already folded now one jelly roll pack will make that table runner for you but if you want if you're going to make the place match you're probably going to have to buy several in order to complete the entire project so what I do after I have cut my strips this is the folded end I'm going to cut just a little bit off cut them in half so that's all I do, cut a little bit off. Then you've got two pieces. When you cut them in smaller pieces, it's much easier to work with. Then, after you cut your fabrics, put the strips in piles in the order that you want to stitch them on to your project, okay? So you've got all of this color in one pile and so forth. Set it aside so as you begin stitching the strips on, you just start pulling them from the different piles. Okay? Alright, so now let's go on. Get your smaller rectangle that you had to cut or cut out. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do this technique on the placemat because the technique is the same no matter if you're making a placemat or a table runner. There isn't any difference. So on your rectangle, you're going to draw a line right here, a 45 degree line, three inches 
from this edge over here. So one, two, three. This is where I'm gonna put it. Now let's look at your ruler. Okay, now you have a 60 degree line going two different ways, a 45 and a 30. We're gonna use this 45 degree line and we're gonna line it up on this edge right here. Okay, so lay it down and I usually put a little dot there where my three inch line is and line it up on that edge and then with a pencil or fabric marker draw a line. Now that's the only line you have to draw on this placement. You don't need to draw anymore. Now from your t pile take a strip out of the first two piles that you have and you're going to bring them right sides together. Okay, so bring them together, line them up, and you're gonna place this edge here right up against that line. Not on top of it, but just right up against it. Now this end here is gonna extend about two inches from this raw edge here, okay? And the bulk of any excess will be out on the opposite side. So about two inches here, line it up, go ahead and place a pin along there, pin it down. You'll take several pins. And then from this raw edge right here, go in a quarter of an inch and stitch a quarter inch seam right there. Okay? All right, let me go on to the next sample. Now, here I've got my first two strips on. They've just been stitched. Now you're going to go to your ironing board and press with your iron. Then unfold this and press again. Now you're going to have overhang on each side. That's good. So you always still want a little bit of overhang on each end. Now on this side you've got a lot so you're going to trim some of it off, but don't trim it up against this edge. Go out a little bit and trim some of it off. You want excess on each edge, and I'll tell you why later. You'll see why later. All right, so now take your next strip. Bring right sides together. Now when you put it down, this time, this end here will go out one inch past the previous strip. So put it out about an inch. Okay, go ahead and pin it down, stitch one quarter inch, then press on the back side, open it up, and press on the front side. Okay, now continue up to this corner, and then I'll show you what you're going to do to get around that corner. Okay, so here is my last strip. I've just, or around this corner, I've just stitched it on, I've pressed it, okay? You want to make sure that that strip covers that corner. Very important. Now, after you get around this corner, you're going to place the next strip just a little differently. This corner here is going to go out past the edge of the fabric here, one quarter inch. So just a little bit, not much. Line it up, okay? Pin it on all the way across and stitch one quarter inch, okay? And when you press and then unfold it, you're gonna see you're gonna have an overhang. You want that and you'll see later why. It really works out good if you have a little bit of overhang. After you've done that, you've gotten around the corner, just continue going past here, placing all the remainder of the strips one quarter inch past this edge here. Okay? All right, so now you've got all of your strips on. Now, here's what it looks like on the back. Here's the front. Okay? Now, this fabric here is the fabric that's going to be on the back of your placemat. So if it's a print you're using, you want the print side facing up at you at this point, and then you're going to put your other, your top piece face down. So you're bringing 
right front sides together. Now this rectangle here is oversized so you want a little bit of this rectangle hanging out past all four edges. Alright? Now we're going to trim all of these edges off. So take your long ruler, I love these 24 inch rulers, and you're going to place the edge of this ruler right here. Lay it on that edge straight as you can and then with your rotary cutter you're going to cut this off okay stuck a little bit there okay now what you want to do is you don't want to shift this until you've pinned this one end down okay so you've got it pinned down now gently turn the place matter table runner and line up your ruler on the second side and continue cutting and place a pin to hold those edges together on the table runner you'll have to place several continue cutting around all four sides now you've got your fabric for the back cut exactly the same size as the placemat so you don't have to realign anything up that's why I like doing it this way okay now you want to continue pinning all four edges together now on one side you want to leave an opening large enough for your hand to go in so place a pin about an inch away from each side of your hand okay then you're going to begin stitching a half inch away from this edge in. So do a few stitches back and forth. Then continue stitching down to this corner. Every time you want, every time you come to a corner, leave the needle down, lift your presser foot up, then turn and go down the next side. And you want to stop when you're a half an inch away from here, from this edge. Go around all four sides and remember needle down, press her foot up at all corners. Then as you come around to this last side here, stop here, go back and forth a few times. Okay? Now, the next step is to trim the corners. Okay? So, as you can see, I've got some lines across here. You're going to do your first cut going this way okay so just cut across there then come to the side and cut at a diagonal in that way and then go off this way when you're done it's gonna all your corners are gonna look like this you want to leave about an eighth of an inch of space there don't cut it too close because your place matter table runner will come apart okay so once you've got the trimming of the corners done, now you're going to reach inside and begin pulling your placemat right side out or the table runner, whichever project you're doing. Okay? And then it's going to look like this. Now, here is where my opening was. Okay? Now, this opening. Oh, excuse me, before you do the opening, let me get my little pointy thing here. You're going to reach inside of your opening and you're going to poke these corners out. Now, don't force it because something sharp could go right through there. Uh, what I usually do if I'm having a hard time is I will sometimes take a straight pin and just tug a little bit not hard just a little bit if it's not coming out don't force it okay all right so now after you've poked out all four corners this opening here you want to pin it closed so fold it in one half inch and place pins over your opening you want it pinned closed then you're going to continue pinning all of your edges flat. So go around all four sides pinning all your edges flat. Now, now you're going to do top stitching. 
So you're going to start in the corner and you're going to stitch a little less than an eighth of an inch away from the edge here. Do a few stitches back and forth, then continue stitching down that side. When you come to the next corner, leave your needle down, press her foot up, turn the placemat or table runner, and continue stitching down the next side. Go around all four sides. One more step. Now, placemats are going to be used, food's going to spill on it, and you will be washing them. So one of the things that will save this placemat so that it maintains its shape is to do some more top stitching. So on this one, I recommend you do something called stitch in the ditch, which is each one of these seams here is referred to as the ditch. So use matching thread. For instance, I used green all the way across because most of the strips have green in it. And then I stitched right in there and go along each one of these seams all the way across. When you turn it over, you're going to see the little stitch lines, okay? And then you are done. Isn't this pretty? This is so much fun. You don't think have to think real hard putting this project together. Let me show you the table runner one more time. Now remember, you don't necessarily have to use Christmas fabric with these. You can use any kind of fabric any theme to use this design. Isn't this pretty? Okay, now if you would like to look at other table runners that the Sewing Room channel has put together, at the very end of the video in the upper right hand corner, click on that top link and it will start taking you through some of the other videos that demonstrate other holiday table runners. Now to keep informed on all my future videos you want to click on one of my subscribe button there's one down there in the lower right hand corner it's red it says subscribe it's there throughout the entire video so you can click on that one at any time then towards the end of the video there's a little round face up here of, of me that's also a subscribe button click on that one once you click on it YouTube will prompt you for your email address then enter that information and the next time I have a new video YouTube sends you a brief email with a big button in the center you click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video I'm Cheryl and I'm really glad you came to my sewing room and I'll see you next time and happy sewing